Welcome and thank you for joining us for this update on Cross Country 2024. If you've been there before, a lot of things will be very similar, but it's been a year, so we thought we'd go over the highlights, get everybody prepared so that we can all have a great Monday. Monday, October the 28th, it's the 2024 Championships at Cottonwood Creek Golf Course in Waco, Texas. All information about the Cross Country Championships and all other cross-country informations can be found on the TAPS website, www.taps.biz. Click on Athletics and then go to that cross-country tab. We look forward to seeing you in Waco and appreciate you joining us for this quick presentation. On the cross-country page, we do have a link to this year's schedule. Look for a red button that says 2024 Championship Meet Race Schedule. If you click on that, you can see both the morning and the afternoon session. The facility opens for the morning session at 7.15. We'll be running the 1A, 4A, and 6As. You can see we'll start with the 1A girls and we'll alternate boys and girls until we finish with the 4A boys at 10.35. The facility opens for the afternoon session at 12 noon and we'll be running the 2A, 3A, and 5A classifications. Once again, we'll be alternating girls and boys starting with the 5A girls at 1 p.m. and finishing with the 2A boys at 2.45. Sunday, October the 27th, we will be open again for our walkthrough. We ask that you do not park or drop off uh, students in the Cottonwood Creek Golf Course parking lot. Please make sure you park in the Waco ISD Stadium parking lot. That way, all of our personnel who are setting up things and getting things ready, we uh, will be unencumbered by buses that somehow can't get back out of the driveway when you make that hard turn. So Sunday, October 27th, we are open for the walkthrough. Can you register and get your bibs on Sunday? Yes, after uh, after 2.30, 3 o'clock, can we walk and run the course? Yes, you may until dark. We'll blow the whistle and tell you when to come back. You can set up your tents if you're in the morning session on Sunday, but we ask that afternoon session folks wait until Monday morning or Monday afternoon to set up your tents. Again, this area is not secured, and the wind of Cottonwood is kind of known during our golf tournament, so leave your tents about halfway up instead of all the way up. There are no markings at any time to be put around the course, so don't do that. We're going to do our best to have the mile markers out there, but they're still constructing the course while we get there. So hopefully they'll be up. They'll at least be in a general area as you walk through. Again, the map uh, course will stay about the same as it was last year. So you'll have a map as you go through. So again, park in the Waco ISD parking lot, staff officials and handicap parking only in the area around the clubhouse. That'll help us uh, as we go forward. Spectators, when they get there on Monday, they're always encouraged. We love having a full crowd. They will be assigned by parking attendants in the Waco ISD Stadium. Tickets can be purchased in advance. We said the word must on the slide, but you can swipe a credit card there if you want to wait in the line. But they can go to taps.biz, click on that big word tickets, and, and purchase those in advance on the website. Spectators must stay off the course, especially during the running of the competition. We try to not run in front of people if we don't have to. Spectators and uh, all personnel must stay off the golf course greens. Cottonwood has been so gracious to give us this course and give us this opportunity. We need to protect the greens at all costs. And in the finish area, once it's inside the ribbon rope, that's for uh, coaches, uh, that students need assistance. That's for our officials. That's for our trainers. So no spectators in the finish area immediately after the finish line. And school personnel with passes, you'll still need to have your pass when you check in on game day. So make sure when you show up, you have that TAPS pass ready. So we look forward again to seeing you on the Monday the 28th. Steve, let's talk a little bit now about registration on site and what you're going to do when you get there. The team areas will be along the fence on the Waco ISD Stadium side. You can set up between 3 and 6 or the day of the meet if you're in the afternoons. We ask that you please don't take that space. If you're in the afternoon, we're right up front, right up close. That's why we're asking you to wait till at least noon. Coach Holmes will be out there to greet you and let you know where you can go. Uh, all the spaces will be marked. It'll go from the visitor entrance all the way down that fence row to the putting greens. Uh, we do not have water or electricity. We ask that you... Uh, be uh, be mindful of the folks around you if you do bring some kind of a portable battery. Uh, that same thing would be your music. Don't let that music carry out uh, beyond your tent. So we don't want to have a, a, a nice opportunity for a concert out there is always good, but not everybody may like your selection. Uh, and you can have your tents, your coolers, and all your team items, and we will be ready to, to see you in October the 28th. All right, registration will be in the designated area in the clubhouse. Coaches, make sure that you bring a completion certificate, 
of the cross country teams course with you to turn in. Uh, you can sign your acknowledgement of rules there, or if you've done that in TMS, that will do as well. Uh, obviously, we do want you to bring your entry fees, bring those with you and pay at that time. You will receive a coach's packet. And in that coach's packet, you'll have your school roster. You'll have bibs for each runner and runner replacement forms. Also, some information, uh, course maps and sponsor information will be included in those. Very important for coaches. Runners are not allowed to run unattached. They must belong to a specific school, must be attending that school. And each member school must designate a coach to coach in this event. That coach must be present. You can't just have a parent drive your team down and have them kind of oversee it. We must have a cross-country coach from each school. That coach must be shown in TMS. They must have completed the team's cross-country course. Once again, be sure to bring that certificate with you. Must have completed the acknowledgement of rules process in TMS or must sign that on site. All school coaches must be in full compliance as shown in TMS. As far as student entries are concerned, you will be filling out a cross-country entry form. We emailed that out on October 10. If you did not see that email, go to our website and probably in that top corner or in that top column, you'll see a link there that will take you to all kinds of cross-country information. There's a link to the cross-country entry form. Also, if you just go to uh, athletics and click on cross country. You can also access that cross country form there, but this is where you will enter all of your kids. A question that we get quite often is does TAPS have a minimum time in order to run the meet for a particular student? And the answer is no. Cross country is an open qualification event. However, I would make sure that your athletes are able to compete and able to uh, complete the course. Any changes to your school entry or substitutions, uh, you can do those changes prior to October 21st, which is the entry deadline. You can use that cross-country form to make changes. After October 21st, please do not use that cross-country form. You will make any of those changes, and it can only be a substitution at the time of registration, no later than 30 minutes prior to the contest. Those substitutes, very important, they must wear the number of the runner who is no longer competing, the runner that they are substituting for. Very important to understand that no additional runners may be added after the entry deadline on October 21st. After that, you can only do substitutions. Entry fees, you can find uh, a blank entry fee sheet posted on the cross country landing page, but uh, make sure your those runners, all of your runners are registered on that cross country form. And the entry fee is $35 per runner. That entry fee is due at the time of the meet. So when you come in and register, make sure you have a check with you uh, for the number of runners. That entry fee that is owed is based on the runners entered at the entry deadline. If you have a kid that doesn't show up, it's not based on how many show up to the meet. It's however many runners you have entered. That Once again, that blank fee sheet is posted on the cross-country landing, landing page. And once again, I can't emphasize enough, please bring that entry fee with you to the state meet. Again, as you think about entry fees, just make sure that on the bottom of that entry form, it will calculate once you show how many students you have coming, boys and girls combined. It'll tell you what your entry fee is. So we do look forward to seeing you there. Just make sure if you have not made uh, accommodations for how you're going to get it paid, make sure you tell the ladies when you register. We're going to talk about finish area workers. It's no longer a shoot. So any school that has five or more runners in the boys or five runners in the girls, you do need to have somebody down there to help with the shoot. There's part of the report down there. Say, hey, I'm so-and-so with so-and-so school. We've got a team entered. You're there to help the students after they finish to cross uh, the line if they need assistance getting to the trainer or sometimes they just need a little help getting their body back under them as they come across uh, and out. If you're not needed, the meet officials on site will release you. So if you have a team of five or more, we do ask that you report to the finish area. Uh, volunteer where you can, and if they release you, you are free to go. Uniforms, make sure uniforms are in compliance with both the NFHS and TAPS rules. So one thing that comes up right now, it's 95 degrees. This is, you know, we're sitting here today. It's probably not going to be that warm when you're down there, but no bare midriffs. 
uh, make sure you don't tie the the knots in the shirts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, shorts must be worn over tights, leotards, body shoots, so you must have modesty shorts. If you're running in the race and you've got your singlet on, your tattoo does not have to be covered. But prior to while you're warming up or immediately after the race, that tattoo has got to be covered up. We're going to ask that on Sunday and on uh, Monday, the competition day, so on the pre-day and the day. Let's not go shirtless. Guys need to have T-shirts on or whatever they're going to wear. Girls, same thing. We don't need uh, young ladies running in sports bras. So let's make sure that we stayed covered up, stay modest. That'll help us stay on the road, warm up and cool down, and in the team area, all those same rules apply. So modesty first. Make sure your uniforms are in compliance, and that'll make it easy on most of our officials. They would prefer to see that they in and day out so again that's sunday and monday so please just make sure we're going to rely on the coaches to keep sure everybody is in the proper attire scoring all individuals must wear the number assigned at registration over the years we've always got somebody that picks up that registration packet and you walk out and you just hand out the bibs make sure you look at the recap sheet it tells you the name and the number so make sure that works all runners will be scored based on the order of finish. Runners shall be scored towards team totals in keeping with the National Federation rules. Team, to be scored as a team, you must have five runners. They must all complete the course, and they will be scored as they come across. In the event of team ties, remember that the NFHS tiebreaker rule is the sixth-place runner. So if both teams have a sixth-place runner, the higher finisher is the winner. If one team does not have a sixth-place runner, the one who does is declared the winner. So if you've got in a tie, they're going to look at sixth place first. If you have a sixth place and the other team has a sixth place, that will be the tiebreaker. If you don't, one does not, the other team wins. If you only have five runners, then the team with the highest placing fourth place finisher determines. Those are the National Federation rules that we use for scoring in the team rules. Live results will be displayed on the video board at the finish line, but as a reminder, all of those times and places are unofficial until the time of the awards. That allows a, you know, we have a 30 minute protest time after the conclusion of a race. So those official results don't come until we actually release them at the awards. Live results online, taps.biz. Click on athletics at the very top of the cross country page. You'll have a live results. I know we'll be tweeting that out as well, and we'll have a QR code there on site. Uh, we'll post them in the patio area and around the back window, so there'll be plenty of opportunity to find out the official scores when we get ready. And we'll also post all those official scores, www.taps.biz. Click on athletics, click on cross country. Those will be posted at the conclusion of the meet. Team IP, our official provider of TAPS memorabilia, will also be on site both Sunday and Monday so that you can purchase uh, shirts, sweatshirts, hats, anything else that uh, will help you remember this event. Uh, they also have an online store, but they will be present both uh, Sunday and Monday for purchase. Also, TAPS Photography will be on site both at the finish area and for the awards. These photos will be available as soon as possible post-event. You can find that at TAPS, the, the TAPS Smug Mug website. Awards will begin approximately 20 minutes after each race in each classification. So as, as your kids finish, make sure you move towards the pavilion where the awards ceremony will be held. Uh, for all state, we will recognize those who finish in the top 10, and those awards will be given at the meet. For academic all state, if they finish in the top 15, if they're a junior or senior, the cumulative GPA is 90 or higher, they qualify for academic all state. You need to submit those by Thursday, November 3rd. We'll also be recognizing the first through fourth place team finishers. So once again, those awards will begin approximately 20 minutes after the last race in each classification. So when your kiddos finish those races, be sure to move them towards the awards pavilion. I want to give a shout out to Victory Rings, one of TAP's official partners for your championship rings. That, that is an opportunity. Information will be available if you need it once we get to the contest. Conversation wouldn't be complete if we didn't send a shout of thanks out to Children's Health Andrews Institute for being on site at all of our champion events. They will be there to take care of your athletes prior to, during, and after the competition. So if you need medical assistance, you don't have your athletic trainer there with you. Andrews Institute a proud partner of TAPS. Again, we're looking forward to seeing you on the 27th and 28th. It's a short 10 days as we get ready to rock and roll by the time you receive this. 
information www.taps.biz click on athletics click on cross country your home for all information if you need to email us it's info info at taps.biz or give us a call at 254-947-9268 we will be monitoring both the email and the phone number on the day of competition so if something comes up and we can be of assistance or you need uh, to talk to us info at taps.biz phone number 254-947-9268 again it's cross country 2024 and we look forward to seeing you in Waco.